evening and welcome to the hot seat. Last month, NOPD officer Daryl Holloway was shot and killed while transporting a suspect in the city of New Orleans. That person, 33 year old Travis Boyce. After a brief manhunt, he was apprehended and is now charged with first degree murder. An investigation into the entire incident has been going on. And just last week, the NOPD superintendent announced that one officer had been arrested and charged. Wardell Johnson is that officer's name. His charges deal with covering up a related incident. We're going to get into that matter. To talk more about this, we're joined by Kerry Kucher with the Capital Defense Project. We know that Boyce is charged with first degree murder, which possibly could be eligible, is eligible for the death penalty if the DA chooses to seek it. And Mike Kahn, former NOPD SWAT team commander and security expert. Let's just get with you, Mike. The police chief is on record saying that this was sloppy police work when Boyce was arrested for a domestic situation at his house. From what you've seen, pretty sloppy. Yeah, there were a lot of inconsistencies as to what happened. Um, there were things that weren't done properly as per protocol with putting evidence on the books uh, and central evidence and property. Uh, there were a series of issues uh, that started from the very beginning that, that led to a, a very bad finality. This officer, Wardell Johnson, was wearing a body camera, according to Superintendent Michael Harrison. He says that the pat-down that Johnson did on Boyce was less than thorough. That's how they believe the fire robbers were concealed and brought into the vehicle with Officer Holloway. Is it safe to assume that this was a, a half-hearted attempt at patting somebody down when he took Boyce into custody? Well, I think there are a couple of things that, that we have to look at. One is that the individual was already arrested. So when the individual was first arrested and it was transferred to the second police officer who was going to transport him, he probably believed there was a thorough pat-down done to begin with. Now, you should still do another thorough pat-down, switch up handcuffs. So, uh, yes, I think that he should have been uh, or should have done a, a more in-depth pat-down, or actually it's a search incidental to arrest, so it's not even a pat-down, it's actually a physical search. The chief said that he, it looked like he tried to leave evidence at the scene, he may have concealed evidence. We'll get to that in a moment, but Kerry Kucha, you've represented people charged with first-degree murder. Why is this different than second-degree murder or manslaughter? Why is it so different defending somebody charged with that capital offense? Well, when you have a capital offense, there are actually two aspects of the case if the district attorney decides to seek the death penalty. There's the culpability trial, the issue of whether the person is guilty or not, which is similar to every other case. If the person's found guilty and the district attorney is seeking the death penalty, then you go into a penalty phase where the jury actually decides whether the punishment will be life imprisonment or whether it will be the death sentence. In all other cases, the judge would decide the penalty. Juries in New Orleans, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, and we don't even know if this case will even end up at trial. Juries in New Orleans, though, are not prone to handing out the death penalty. Well, that's certainly a rumor, and that's certainly a common belief. But I think that the juries in New Orleans are very good at assessing the circumstances under which a death penalty is appropriate and when it's not. So I don't think there's anything uh, about the juries themselves other than that they're very, very good at observing and listening and making a proper determination. Do you think this case ends up at trial? You're not involved with it, but you very much well could have been, given the fact that your capital defense project does handle first-degree murder cases. It appears that the evidence against Boyce is overwhelming. The cops say they have him on body camera, and it seems like it's pretty overwhelming against him at this point. Well, if every time they said the evidence was overwhelming, it were, there wouldn't be very many trials. And I'm not going to comment about the evidence in this case because I'm really not familiar with it other than what I've heard in the news. Mike, from what you've heard, and you are obviously well aware of this, still having close ties to people in the department, it appeared that Holloway, according to the superintendent, was wearing his body camera. Do you think this goes to trial? Do you think that a plea bargain has to be reached because it appears that the evidence is overwhelming in this case when it moves forward in the legal system with Travis Boyce. Well, again, that would be up to the DA, but I don't see the DA uh, giving a plea bargain in a case like this. I see it going to trial, and I see them shooting for the death penalty. I mean, in this situation, you have a police officer doing his job who was allegedly malicely killed by someone for no reason whatsoever. Uh, that's not a situation that I would want to plead out. When you have lawyers involved in this, is it a big burden for the public defender's office? They're handling this case for Boyce. They have assigned two attorneys that you know very well. You're familiar with this. A lot of lawyers running the same circles around Tulane and Broad. 
Is it a burden for them to handle a case like this or overwhelming for them to handle a case with such high publicity as this one's gotten? Well, the lawyers who are working on this case are part of a special unit inside the public defender's office to handle capital cases. So it shouldn't be any type of undue burden on them other than what they would normally take on, which is what they're there for. I believe if I have the stats right, one death penalty handed out by a jury in the last 15 years in Orleans Parish, I believe that was Michael Anderson, and then that was later tossed out by, I think, an appellate court judge or the district judge. Do juries, when they weigh the decision of death or life, is it difficult for them to say, yes, this person should die for the crime they were convicted of, or do they just say, you know what, life in prison at Angola is punishment enough? Well, every case is, is, is different. One thing that you have to understand, the law never requires uh, that a death penalty be given. The law is satisfied with a life imprisonment sentence once somebody's been found guilty. So the jurors are, really have a very difficult task because they have found the defendant guilty at that point, and now they have to decide what's the appropriate punishment. And certainly life imprisonment without probation, parole, or suspension of sentence is a very, very uh, harsh punishment itself. When you handle cases like this, what is your selling point? What do you tell a jury when it comes down to this person's life should be spared? Is there a technique or a tactic used by defense attorneys in these cases? I, I wouldn't say that there's a tactic or a technique. The question in the penalty phase moves from does the evidence prove beyond a reasonable doubt that this person committed this crime to what each individual juror perceives as the appropriate punishment for this person. And at that point, it really becomes a moral judgment for them. Because as I said, the law never requires a juror to vote for the death penalty, never requires that a death penalty be returned or a death sentence imposed. Each individual juror has the right and, in fact, the responsibility to make that decision. And that's why the law says that it has to be a unanimous verdict before we impose a death penalty. So if one person feels that the appropriate punishment under all of the circumstances of the case, not just deciding upon what happened in the crime itself, but the person himself who committed the crime, then you wind up with a life sentence. Right. It's got to go 12-0 in a first-degree murder case. Correct. Mike, let's get back to the investigation here. It's still ongoing. According to the superintendent, Wardell Johnson attempted to leave a shell casing at the scene, and then Boyce was initially charged with a misdemeanor for allegedly shooting at his wife. On top of the, if you will, lack of a pat-down or the shortchanging the pat-down, does it also appear that this was sloppy police work on the initial call to charge Boyce with a misdemeanor and not something like attempted murder? Well, again, from what I understand and what I've been told about this as well as media is that the original case was the individual shot at his uh, significant other. To me, that's attempted murder. You have a shell casing on the, uh, on the ground, you have a bullet hole in the wall, and she's claiming that she's been abused. Uh, at this point, you need to escalate it and interview a little bit more and find out what's going on. And then when you find the individual, it would certainly uh, stay out in my mind that I'm going to thoroughly search him because he was just involved in a crime with a gun and allegedly shooting at someone. So I'm going to completely pat him down from head to toe, check inside of his pants, socks, shoes, everything to make sure there is no weapon on him. Another officer is under investigation. This probe continues, as the superintendent said. They're going to go wherever the evidence leads them. Do you see more fallout, or does it stop with Officer Wardell Johnson? Well, I definitely think there's going to be some more fallout. I don't know that it's criminal at this point. I believe that uh, at least it's malfeasance, and some things happened uh, with that individual uh, that, that she tried to claim having uh, no semblance to be a part of, but dropped some evidence off that was obviously part of the original crime. Is this something that the federal government could look at, or state police, outside of PIB? and the NOPD. Is this something they have their eyes on as well right now? Well, the FBI will always look at these cases and always keep a periphery to what's going on. I think NOPD is doing a fantastic job on this. Uh, PIB, Public Integrity, is thoroughly investigating this and has made a lot of headway. They have a special unit inside of uh, Public Integrity that deals with situations like this. And thus far, uh, they're doing a great job of recovering all the uh, missing clues and ascertaining what exactly transpired that night. Final question, how do you think the legal system plays out for Travis Boyce? You've already indicated you think the DA will take this to trial. 
and secure a conviction. Is that how you think this shapes up? I absolutely think that. And again, uh, the only thing that would defer the death penalty would possibly be a juror that just doesn't feel like someone should be killed and they don't want that to weigh on their minds. But otherwise, this is absolutely a death penalty case. Carrie, how do you think this ends? We have a long legal process for Travis Boyce in front of us here. How do you think everything unfolds? Well, I think it's irresponsible for anyone to sit here and say with any degree of conviction uh, how it's going to unfold. There are so many questions yet to be answered, not only about what took place in that automobile at the time and how the shooting itself took place, but then even if you get to the point of uh, Travis Boyd being found guilty, the question is, what is the appropriate punishment? And that moves away from actually what happened that day, but a lot of other things. And there's absolutely no evidence and no discussion of any of that going on. And even if it had been going on, we really don't know what it is. And until that evidence is shown to a jury of 12, and then and only then can anybody make any type of really responsible prediction of what should, should, what should or will take place. All right. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I, you know, I think that, that uh, with going there, you know, there's certain things that we do know. We do know that this individual is arrested. We do know this individual is placed in the back of a police car. We do know the individual escaped and the one police officer driving the car was shot and killed. Uh, those things add up to be a little bit more than just negligently speaking about something. Again, the case has to go to trial, but I think there's a significant amount of evidence to uh, be introduced that this individual perhaps committed a very callous crime and should be responsible for it. All right, we could talk for days about this topic. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Kerry Kucha, Capital Defense Project, Mike Kahn, former NOPD SWAT team commander, we appreciate your time. Gina, that is all the time that we have for now. Let's send it back to you on the news desk.